trying to live my life by, which is how you do one thing is how you do anything, you know? So if you're able to be consistent in one aspect of your life, it's going to help you be consistent in other aspects of your life. The Move Entrepreneur Evolved Podcast. Get on it. And we're back with another episode with the Moved Entrepreneur Evolved Podcast. I am excited today for a couple of reasons. If you've been following the Moved Podcast, we bring on some amazing guests. Not only do they have some amazing stories, but they really are some really cool people. And I've been very fortunate to work with this guest. And so we're going to split this podcast in maybe a story about how he's gone through our program, which is the Moved 30 Agency Performance System. And I'm excited to share not only how that has gone, but also on the on the other side to be able to talk with, with this guest about what he's been doing other ways. So, Mr. Jeff Skadra with Focus First. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. It's Friday. The sun is out. It's spring. I love it. My favorite time of year. So let's go. Is it? Why, why, why do you, you, you like... Uh... You like the transition starting to head into summer? Is it that like life's going to be? I do. I, I love spending time outside, um, you know, through the winter. It's tough being a, uh, you know, work from home um, entrepreneur. It's it's tough through the winter, right? Because you're stuck inside all the time. Not that you can't go out and do things, but, you know, we have a nice property here. So I'm able to go outside and work and and sit outside and and do things on my phone and work from my phone. So that level of freedom for me is, is tremendous, something that, you know, I didn't have throughout my whole life because I always had a job. And I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, a huge topic of discussion maybe at some point today, which is, yeah. you know, finding that freedom as a business owner that so many of us get stuck with, um, you know, getting stuck in that day to day is really tough. So, but yeah, I, I love it. It's great. Um, sun is my friend. <laughs> Just soak it up. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you yeah. this, you talk about your property and, uh, you know, I've gotten to know you. And uh, when you get to know people, you get to have meetings in some cool spots. And we've had some actually kind of little meetings sitting outside and you you were hanging out at your fire. You make these yeah, little bonfires gosh. and you're sitting out there and we're talking. And I, I just thought that was super cool. I always remember that. <laughs> so yeah, I'll have yeah. to do it. I, I don't have the... I don't have sun that you guys have out there in California here in the Midwest and Ohio. But uh, yeah, we, we have lots of land out here. So that's always nice. That is so cool. Well, let's jump right into this. So... We've got Jeff here, and Jeff, you started with our agency performance system, our Move 30, and I was super excited. We we had gotten to know each other, and we found some things that we maybe can work together on. And so just some questions is like, what are, uh, what are the biggest achievements that you've uh, experienced going through the Move 30 and graduating to the Move 101 agency performance coaching system? Yeah, with Move 30... The the program was great from the get go. When you first pitched it to me, um, I was on board, you know, like you were saying all the right things about consistency and, you know, all the foundational elements um, of running a business that, that don't even necessarily, you know, involve the day to day of the business, but the things that I needed uh, in my mindset and my physicality, you know, that had a huge impact. And I just instinctively knew that that was something that was missing. And so for me, getting that level of consistency in other areas of my life really ended up helping in my business. Um, so I'm excited to share more about that as we move forward. Yeah. So um, what are some of the core things um, that you accomplished, if we were to kind of break down three or four things that you had accomplished as we started the move 30. Yeah. Um, like I said, consistency is huge, but tangibly speaking, um, you know, I'd always been good working out, um, maybe inconsistent, but I've been, you know, at least doing it week over week. And so that was one thing that really helped me to realize was, Look, you can work out every single day and it doesn't have to be like a month to try to climb, right? You don't have to jump and say, oh, oh I got to I gotta get down there 45 minutes. I got to sweat my ass off. I got to do all these things. No, you just have to do something and move, right? So move every day and move 30, right? Um, the other thing was was revenue, revenue and, and even a bit of focus, even though the thing that I do for others is help them find focus. You know, it's always something that I'm looking for too, you know, and that's why we hire coaches and other people because we're looking for that level of focus. And so I had gotten to a point where I was transitioning in my business and kind of adding some new, new levels into my business around um, helping businesses become acquired, not just scaling, but scaling and then becoming acquired. And it was 
getting a little complicated for me and, and how I moved out into the market. So you helped me simplify things down and we did a LinkedIn campaign and, and did some um, outreach. And within, I want to say 45 days, the first 45 days, I think we were like a, an additional $50,000 in contracts, um, you know, four or five new clients at that point, um, and a bunch of conversations around businesses that wanted to become acquired that we're still in talks with today and moving forward with. So those two things alone were absolutely huge for me. And then I think a third thing was really around um, getting my mind clear. You know, we we did things around the, the, the meditation. Um, and I had done some of that in the past and I was doing some of that, but it just brought me to a new level um, of, of helping me find clarity, of, of freeing up my brain, you know, my mind um, and, and getting me even more focused day over day. So finding that, that energy. So those are three really powerful things that it helped me with. What um, in your agency and, and how you help people in Focus First, what is the core of your product that you do? The core of what I do is I help businesses grow and scale so that they can get to a point, typically under a million dollars, grow and scale to a point where they can get to a million dollars and then be able to increase their valuation at that point in time so they can uh, have an exit for more money in less time. Uh, you know, I, my, my a quick background about me is I was a, a marketing agency owner. Um, I went through all the ups and downs that every business owner and agency owner goes through. Um, found my focus, which is the thing that I teach people today of, of how to find that focus in their business. And then I was acquired, my business was acquired, and I learned a lot of lessons through that point, um, things that I would not, not repeat. Uh, and it was just because I didn't know any better, right? And so a lot of agency owners, a lot of business owners get to that point where they want to exit um, and they know a thing or two about it, but then uh, on the back end, they realize they could have done things differently um, and have some, maybe some regrets or maybe left some money on the table. So we're looking for ways to get to business owners sooner so they don't have that problem when they go to exit and everything's done and ready and buttoned up really nicely for um, and really attract for a buyer to come in and provide them with the highest multiple possible. And, and one thing that I've watched you to you that you're really good at <clears throat> is you prepare them to scale and then you prepare them to sell. And I think yeah. that this is something that people don't realize that you you understand really well is there's a core foundation that you need to place so they can actually place themselves in that position. And one thing that I also think that you've done very well is um, the split that sometimes business owners get to the point where they want to scale, they want to sell, but then maybe they see the revenue and they say, you know, I'm going to keep this business model. So I think you've done a good, a really good job about that. Um, before you started with the Move 30, here, let's, I'm going to do a, I'll have them edit this out really quick, but remember to say like Jason or the move 30, because then they come in in the clips, just a reminder. Yeah. So Alex, edit that part out. <laughs> we'll go for it get ready. Before you started the move 30, did you have any services that you ended up removing? I know one thing that I like to work on is trying to get down to that simplicity. Very simple. As we were going through this process, did you, ha did we have anything that we needed to eliminate? When I got into the Move 30 program, there was uh, a lot of things I ended up removing from my service offering. I'm a jack of all trades, so it's really easy for me to come into a business and look at everything and try to fix everything in a business. Um, and ultimately, to become scalable, there are some there are a lot of things that need fixed, but there's a core set that has to happen. So during the Move 30 program, we identified really what are those core things. You made me really look at what I was doing and what I was delivering and really put um, some definition to what am I actually accomplishing with each of these, these areas? You know, as we move into each of these areas of focus for a business, what are we actually doing, right? What is the needle that we are moving and eliminate everything else that didn't fit in that um, and, and just really stick to the guns because it is really easy. And, and even the people that I work with, the agency owners that I work, work with, they want to do everything for everybody, right? And so when, when I work, same thing happens with me. When I work with these agency owners, everyone's a little bit different. And so you want to come in and try to be reactive to that when the reality is when you come in and just really 
uh, follow the plan that you know works every single time, the formula that I know works every single for a business, then we find success easier and faster and more consistently um, with every client. It's kind of funny how sometimes it comes down to, <clears throat> you know, doing the work. But I think one thing that we both came to this conclusion and, and hopefully we injected it is that we can break this down into micro actions. What, what do you, what do you feel um, in the move 30? We talk a lot of like a lot of the micro actions that we take daily so we can get compounded interest in the long term. What was your feeling when um, I would challenge you and say, look, I think you're doing too much. What was that feeling um, of, was it resistance? What was that feeling? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, it was a hundred percent resistance. It was, um, yeah. Like, what are you talking about? I'm doing too much, you know, like I'm doing everything that I, I need to be doing. Um, but I was open to the idea, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a closed door. I was definitely open to that of, of really understanding, okay, wh what, how could I simplify this? You know, and one of those was uh, my mark, you know, of the messaging that I was putting out into the marketplace. And when we did that successful LinkedIn campaign, we identified that let's take one aspect of what you do, right? One micro, like you said, one micro aspect of what you do, take that out there and see how that works. And it worked great. Um, and we're redoing it again right now and it's starting to work again. So uh, we focused really on the sales process and said, let's come up with uh, uh, what's unique about our sales process. It's our anti-proposal mm -hmm. sales process because every agency owner has huge headaches around creating custom proposals that that had a really big appeal to people. So mm -hmm. we went out in the marketplace, we got a, on a bunch of calls, we did a bunch of walkthroughs and that turned into a bunch of clients. It was really so, cool yeah. to watch. Um, I always think it's cool to watch people grow because when, when you kind of see the door open, then you're like, oh, okay, there's more over there. But when the door feels like it's closed all the time and you don't have any momentum, you're like, ah, like I can't get this door open. But it's quite interesting when you get the door going, you can open the door. It's like more doors open, you know? Yeah, it's, it's hard to find that momentum in marketing uh, yourself when you're trying to cast a broad, like a really broad net. You know, like um, this wasn't my messaging, but when you say something like, hey, we can help your business scale, you know, everybody talks about that and it, it means something different. Every business has a different way of helping you scale. Some help you scale through leads. Um, like we focus a lot on systems and processes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that that uh, that term has become very ambiguous and, and meaningless really in the marketplace. So you have to get very micro. Um, and, and I did just hear. Uh, or saw a post somewhere where they were, or somebody else was talking about that in a Facebook group where they said, how do you get successful in marketing? You niche and you sub niche and you sub niche on that niche and you find messages and, and uh, interest in those uh, sub niches of sub niches, you know, and, and an anti-proposal sales process is essentially like a sub niche of a niche, right? It's, yeah. it's growth and scale it's sales. And then it's the, the proposal and process behind, um, you know, closing, closing every customer. When you first started uh, the Move 30, what was going on in your head um, as we started to lay out your action plan? We created you a calendar and we said, look, these are the action places every single day. When you started, we we kind of hung up. And at that moment, you're kind of, you're like, now it's my turn, right? W what was that feeling? Because I know sometimes people tell you to do stuff and then you're like, oh man, what was that feeling in the beginning when you're like, all right, I'm going to start this? What, what did you feel um, in that performance system we created. When I started the move 30 program and you laid out that plan for me and, and all the pieces, I was really excited. You know, I was really excited because I knew the consistency lacking in my day to day. Um, I I'm like a lot of other entrepreneurs and have a lot of HD, ADHD tendencies. Um, and so I, I, you know, have that shiny object syndrome where it's like, okay, yeah. I'm doing something for a little bit and then boom, Boom. something else grabs my attention and or, or priority and boom, I got to do this thing and I got to do this thing. But seeing that plan, especially around the, the physical aspect of it, or actually it was the whole thing, right? The move 30 was, was three elements. It was the, the kind of the spiritual, the meditation, it was the physical and it was the business. And so having something to do every single day. And for us, it was, you know, do, do something small, 10 minutes of meditation. I think you even start with five minutes, yeah. and five minutes of meditation, super easy, right? Um, do, do the, the, the physical part was super easy too, right? 50 push-ups spread out over a day of 
40 or 50 calf raises spread out over a day. I did them all at once, but there were days when it was like, okay, I'm not going to be able to, to get 20 or 30 minutes locked in. So let me do five here, 10 here, you know, and get those squats in that alone. I mean, had a huge, huge impact. And then the business stuff kept it really simple as well, which was just do like five follow-ups, right? We know that that the fortune is in the follow-up and you got to follow up with people anywhere from like three to seven times before they even respond in most cases. Um, and so you have to be consistent with that every single day, you know, and later on uh, when I got less consistent, guess what happened? The sales dried up. Yeah. Now that I'm back to being consistent again, now I'm seeing results again. So. And I remember the fork in the road and, 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 you know, the cool thing is you're not alone, right? It's all of us. We're all the same, you know? And I, I always thought it was cool because sometimes when we would meet, it would mean it really was coming together and just asking you like many times, you, Oh, I want to go do this. And asking you are, you know, we made a commitment back here, but is, is this really going to move us forward? And I think you did a really good job on backboarding that and, and, you know, your resistance was natural, but we really wanted to try to say, how can we look at this a little different? And I think you did a really good job at that. Yeah. You, you, you know, I brought some things to your attention that I was thinking about, you know, this thing and that thing. And I think you even challenged me and said, what else is, you know, what else is on your mind? Like what else is like, you know, top of mind for you that, that you think you want to do? Um, and I don't, I don't know if I remember the exact, uh, items that we talked about, but you wrote them down, you know, on your board and you said, okay, there's this, okay, there's this thing. Okay. There's this thing now. And, and just like what you're saying there, you said, is this really what's going to move us forward? Right. Mm-hmm. I think one of them was like a complete left field. Cause I had invested in, in, a, in another coaching program around, um, uh, the, uh, the website, um, rank and rent websites yes. and, uh, and you're like, I know you invested money in that. I know it was a lot, but is that going to move forward? Is that going to move you forward? Right. Like trying to figure that out. And I battled back against it. Right. I was you like, did. Oh, I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> you fought me. I got this you... guy. I got this guy. And guess what? You know, it, it, it didn't come to fruition, but I tabled it, still tabled. And, uh, you know, if uh, when the time's right, the time will be right for it. And other than that, stay focused, stay consistent. And I think one of the things that um, in that conversation that you and I would have is we would ask the question, are you planning on making this service a million dollar business? Right. And then we said, how much effort would it take? And then as kind of a team, we said, well, is it too much or is it not? And then at that point, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, what do you think? (laughs) You got to make that decision, you know? Um, When we just talked a minute, go ahead. Sorry, I learned a ton. Like every time I see something like that now on TikTok, where it's like, "Hey, just sign up for three hundred dollars, and we'll you know we'll get you started, and it'll be super easy," right? Um, tempted, right? Like, because you know, entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, like, oh, I can do money, I can make money there, I can make money there. But the one thing that I've learned through all this is it doesn't matter what it is. Like, it all takes time, you know, and it always takes more time than you think it's going to take, and what they promise that it's going to take. So. You know, where are you spending your time? And this is a valuable lesson. And one of the one of the key um, elements of the success of my program is around freeing up your time and making sure you know the cost of your time of where you're spending it and how that's costing you from being able to turn your, your agency into a million dollar agency and sell it. You know, you're stuck in a place be, simply because of the of where you're spending your time. So, and I I remind myself of that, and you reminded me of that, uh, and because it, it's super easy just to kind of move in these different directions. Um, when when you started the move thirty, um, and you went from, um, you know, an, an average of maybe getting you know eight to ten thousand in consistent revenue, and then we were to spike up fifty thousand dollars in contracts. What was going on in your head at that time? You know, how were you feeling in 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 going through that next phase? I mean, you feel a sense of relief, right? I mean, money is the thing that essentially cures the business, you know, cash flow. And I was doing pretty good up to that point, and I was definitely doing better than I was the previous year. Um, but that really pushed me and jump started me into 2023, um, where now I'm doing basically double what I did last year because of that jump start. Um, I'm on track to do at least double um, what I did last year. So that's exciting. And 
it opens a lot of doors, right? I mean, now it's like, okay, it's you're, you're getting out of the hustle mindset a little bit and into, okay, now I have a legitimate, uh, you know, I've always had a legitimate business, but a, a business, a legitimate business as a, as a coach and consultant is, is a different mindset than like an agency owner, because you don't, you haven't, you didn't start this thinking in terms of growing a team and and how do I delegate things and how do I be more efficient? You just come in thinking, I'm just going to help people, right? But now I'm at that point, I've got, been able to get to that point because of the Move 30 program, that now I'm starting to think in those terms of, you know, just like I'm helping my business owners that I help create an asset and have a mindset around the fact that they have an asset more than a job. Now I'm trying to do the same thing for myself and that's opened, uh, opened the door, you know, that cash flow um, and consistency has been able to open the door for that thinking. So one of the things in the move 30 um, that we do that I think is different is that we come with a strategy in the beginning. And then what we do is we create a micro action plan for the next 30 days. And the reason um, that we do that is because I found personally that a lot of people have a lot of information, but the analogy would be they take you out in a boat and then they show you how to like make the boat, but they never show you how to get back to the shore. <laughs> and in this case, we do 30 days and that action plan is to earn, learn, or pivot. At what point through those 30 days did you find yourself wanting to quit? You know, it's usually actually, you know, and I've done, I've tried to do these things on my own, you know, and, and usually it is around like the 30 day mark more so than, than before that. Um, for me, maybe, you know, it was a little bit easier than others, especially around working out. Cause I've, I've had that, um, I was already in that place and already doing pretty well, um, and I was doing okay with leads and marketing. I was staying a little bit consistent weekly, but not daily. And so towards the end of that 30 days, even in halfway into the next 30, I think is when it started to break down or, or wanted, you know, the resistance started to kind of creep in around, you know, oh yeah, it's okay. Like, you know, that I didn't work out today. Like, no, it was just 50 push ups. It was just this, like, I'll be fine tomorrow. Like it's, it's okay. You know, you start to justify that and you start to get out of that consistency. Um, and it is hard, right? It's like, okay, you know, you get into this feeling of I mastered 30 days, you know, I did it, I'm done you now. And, and I think the hard part is really getting into that next, and you know, the next one and the next one and the next one and keeping going. And I think you even said like, how do you make this boring, <laughs> which is hard for an entrepreneur. It's hard to do something more. Yeah. It's really hard to do something that's boring um, and, and to, to think in those terms, but you have to outweigh, you know, you have to let the, uh, the results of where you're headed outweigh, you know, what you're in right now and that, that boring state, because you know that it's not going to be boring forever. Um, even though you're trying to create a boring business that's repeatable and, and generating, you know, what you want it to generate every single month, um, eventually you're going to be able to move into the next thing, the next stage of your business. Why do you think that, um, in your opinion, many people might ask me, oh man, you know, um, I don't, I know, you know, this, this isn't a workout program, but why do you think, um, and we got, we get the results of 50,000 and now you've even got more coming in, but why do you think that I incorporated a micro action of, of fitness and a micro action of a mindset and a meditation and why that changed your business aspect because i think many people well, i don't i don't want to and why do you think it was so important that i added those two pieces that then connected it to the micro actions of your business well there's a, there's several reasons and there are the reasons that i've always been uh you know trying to live my life by which is how you do one thing is how you do anything you know so if you're able to be consistent in one aspect of your life, it's going to help you be consistent in other aspects of your life. Um, the other side of it is, is just simply energy um, and, and focus. You know, when you wake up in the morning and you meditate and you calm your mind and, uh, you know, I, I don't have all the, the chemistry behind it, but there's something that happens through that chemistry of meditation that helps you through the rest of the day, you know, and so does, so does the, um, uh, exercise. We all know exercise, you know, releases the the right chemicals, which keeps mm -hmm. us focused, serotonin, dopamine, all these other things that keep us moving 
uh, without having to move, right? It keeps our brains moving in a, in a positive way. So these things are the, um, the foundation for being successful. Like if you, you know, I, you could probably be successful without exercising. I'm sure plenty of people have, but I think you would elevate that level of success um, exponentially by incorporating these things. I thought something was really cool when you started. It, it, actually, it was, I think it was like 45 days in or something. I'm going to recall this. And you got on and you immediately, you looked me in the face and you were like, I see why you're having me do the push ups. And I remember you were sharing with me, you were like, it's not the push ups. What it is, is that you're showing me that if I can keep doing this very small incremental, I take that same micro action, I add it to my business model. And I remember you kind of breaking through with that and going, oh, wait a minute, I just micro this because physical, sometimes you can push through your brain, right? But business sometimes is the same thing. And I remember that epiphany and you and I were like, yeah, this is why is because it all kind of comes together. Um, what uh, hurdles as an agency owner uh, did you overcome working with me in the Move 30 and the one-on-one -on -one program? And this is one I think is important that overflowed into your daily life, your family and your friends. When I was in the Move 30 or because of because of the Move 30 program, there was a lot that I was able to overcome in my personal life and my business. Um, and doing the exercise and meditation and the daily work on the business, you know, the micro actions like you talked about had a huge impact, not only in, you know, where the business went, but how I lived my personal life, you know, and one of those things was really exciting for me was working towards something new and exciting that wasn't work. And that was um, taking on climbing, you know, indoor climbing, something I had done here and there. And back in college, I was in a climbing club that I didn't really, wasn't very active in, but something that I always enjoyed doing. And I said, you know, I'm gonna, and I did, I think I'd done it one time before you and I started working together. And I said, okay, that's the thing. Like, that's the thing that I'm going to work towards and be even more consistent on. And so, um, what that led to was me taking every Friday off. Like I don't, uh, I pretty much don't work any Friday. I almost always go drive an hour and a half to go to an indoor climbing gym um, every Friday. And I take that time for myself to recharge, um, to get stronger. Um, and and doing something like that that challenged me a little bit outside of work has helped me um, in other ways as well to realize, you know, I can push my body and my limits. I'm going to be 46 this year and I do get hella sore afterwards still from doing it. Um, and probably always will, no matter how good a shape I'm in, because it's such yeah. a, a strenuous uh, thing to do. But, you know, that's helped me to even live in the moment a little bit more too and realize that it, it's not always about pushing towards a goal, you know, this constant push that I've been doing since day one of being a business owner, like 20 years ago. Um, and which has helped me in my family life to realize, you know, what is the most important thing. And, and it's a huge part of what I do now in, in helping business owners and help them realize that, yes, we're here to set a goal for you to make your business more scalable and more sellable. But first, you know, I want you to make a life not a living. Like I want you to think in terms of why are you doing what you're doing and don't live in, and I, I preach this a lot, you know, don't, don't let the end justify the means. Don't sacrifice time today for time later. Um, and I, I, part of my story is a valuable lesson in that when I was an agency owner working until 10 o'clock at night, um, however many hours I had worked that, that week, probably 50, 60 plus, uh, missed my daughter's soccer game that day she had scored one or two goals and I just sat there reflecting you know ended up putting my head down I think and just really hitting a low point in my life of realizing that same thing that I just said which was you know why am I sacrificing time with my family for something I hope for in the future like live in the moment now because it's not going to be there right you're going to miss miss that and so circling back to the move 30 program it's all like reminded me of all that and helped me get back into that. Um, you know, really had been pushing hard in my business and, and as a, a um, you know, a, a solopreneur, you know, as a coach consultant, I've got to do everything and I've got to keep pushing, but I also have to live my life today um, with my family and for myself. Yeah. 
I, I think that um, one of the things that I tried to develop in the Move 30 is that we looked beyond, and I think you remember when we started, the first question I had for you was like, what are we going to do with the money? Like, what fun stuff can we do? Remember, I was like, what can we anchor off of that if all this works out? We're doing fun stuff, you know. I came from a time where it was like work hard, play hard, and I think we've created this idea that you can do this. You get, but the truth is, you got to kind of have the strength, and then you got to then have the clarity, and then you're like, wait a minute, I'm not just doing my business to do my business. A lot of times, people want to do other things. You know, you may want to buy a boat. You may to go do it. It's not always about business. Business is the vehicle to do things in life, and I think that you incorporated that like really well. Um. What do you believe uh, are the techniques when you and I work one-on-one -on -one, um, through the Move 30 and the one-on-one -on -one program um, that helped you achieve your goal that may be different in other programs? Um, through the Move 30 program, you know, some of the things that were different that you helped me with that were different than, than others is, you know, really really sitting down every week and and looking at the different aspects of that are core to the move theory program you know the the meditation and the the physical aspect and the business and benchmarking those week over week and mm -hmm. and talking about them um and, and and talking about improvements you know how how they're helping to improve things uh, really helped having the accountability there um, that that led to consistency, accountability that that led to continued consistency, knowing that I, you know, knowing that I'm coming into that meeting and and that I've got to be accountable and I've got to tell Jason that I've done these things, I've checked them off, um, and we're good to go, and they're having an impact. So those things really, really, really helped. Um, and then uh, you know, around the delivery and the visualization and the simplification of, of what I was doing had a huge impact as well. And, and we parallel each other a lot on this stuff. You know, you, you take a slightly different standpoint than I do. Like, yes, you incorporate systems and, and processes and how you do it. I'm, I'm very heavy into the actual systems of them, um, of implementing those systems for agency owners. But we, we are very parallel in our thinking of what works and, and it's probably just because it's what works in the world in general, which is keep things simple, you know, yeah. keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, you know, simple scales period. So, um, how do you feel about others being able to achieve these results that you've been able to achieve with myself, Jason Starbuck and the move 30? <laughs> Jason and the move 30 program is going to be amazing for anybody who joins because, you know, it, it will, it will having that level of consistency and simplifying what you do on a day to day, there's, there's almost no choice for that to be, to, to get you successful. And I see it all the time with my clients, you know, as soon as I get them focused and what they need to be focused on and, and get them all out of the weeds of the other things, like things just start to happen. You know, there, there's not a lot of uh, um, complication, but there's not a lot of thinking that has to happen because, we're all clearly smart because we're business owners um, and, and we know what we're doing and we know how to move forward. It's just being able to, uh, for me, it was to like free my time from all or free my mind from all the clutter um, and really focus on what matters, you know. And so that that's going to have a tremendous impact. Um, that alone will will drive your business forward. If you were to make an impactful looking into the camera statement on why people should join the Move 30 program, um, how, what would you say to them? You should join the Move 30 program because it'll literally change your life. The level of change that I've found in my business and in my life will stick with me now and forever, uh, period. I don't know what else to say beyond that because everything else is ancillary, right? The, the money that I'm from it, the, um, the, the, the consistency that I've gotten from it, the, the different mindsets and the new techniques um, for working out and for meditation, like all those things secondary to the fact that it just, it just changed my way of thinking and, and everything else behind that has become successful. 
Awesome. Um, I'm going to kind of make a pivot here. And um, I, I, number one is congratulations on, on learning some of these things. You know, obviously, uh, you know, we learn each other on our journeys and I just got to meet you at that point where we kind of got to connect. And I thought I'd just say something in, in one thing that you did, Jeff. And when I see any of my students and things that I've learned is you just did it. And I, and I think that one thing that people miss out on in these type of things is just do it, just, just do it. And one of the things that I think I probably said to you is remember that the motor doesn't care about the terrain. It doesn't matter at all. You can be off-roading and you could be on a boulder and the motor is still going to be the same motor as it was going forward. And I think that you did a really good job in incorporating, I'm going to do the work. And I think that also you did really well on accepting that we're not having to cram, you know, I use the CrossFit example, we're extremist, that you don't need to cram in all these things and then try to jam them in. We can actually micro them down. And by micro them down, we create a data and we would go, well, what's the data that we've now got? And because of the phase in the area that you're at, you become that energy. And then from there, we start looking at who can take that energy away and outsource it, get them into a better business position and hire new staff. Um, when you, uh, started your agency or your, your business model that you have now, and you started working with your clients, what inspired you to start doing it? What inspired me to start doing my work? Yeah. Like in getting into the digital world, what inspired you to get into the digital space? Yeah. I mean, it was really my past experience. So uh, my past experience led me to where I am today. And the fact that, um, you know, I was a business owner really, you know, wanted, there, there was aspects of what I had done in my story, which, which I mentioned earlier was around being an agency owner, you know, hitting those really low points of, of just working too much and focusing on the end versus, you know, living in the moment. Um, and then having, you know, a less or a subpar um, earnout and exit in my business, you know, all of these things led me to this point today. You know, when I first started, it just was really simple of, I just want to help people, you know, fix some of the systems and the bottlenecks of their business, right? Which led to, I want to help these, you know, mid six figure agencies, you know, like I was to be able to scale and to, to fix the foundational elements that are holding them back from scaling. And then from there it was great. Now we've, we've got that system in place. And now we see that they have the opportunity if they can make it up to one, $1.5 million to exit their business and to now take that and, and either turn it into an asset that continues to fund their lifestyle, or they can take the proceeds of that and go do the next thing in their life or do something, you know, like everybody who in the world that I, when I ask, what do you want to do? It's always, I want to travel more, you know, I want to spend more time with family, you know, they want to do all these things that they feel like, you know, are, are far, far out in the future. So to me, that, that part of, you know, helping them make a life and not a living, that part really fuels me because I can see from the outside in that of what is possible in, in each one of these business owners, each one of these agency owners business. And that they're so close, right? They're, they're, uh, what's the book, um, uh, Napoleon Hill, right? Three feet from gold, right? They're just running parallel to that gold vein and they're digging mm. and digging and digging, never quite you know, getting over. And all they got to do, if they could just see it, is just, you know, hop over three feet and they're, they're, they're golden, right? They're literally golden. <laughs> yeah. Now, I know we talked about this, but the focus, um, focus First has a proposal system. What had you create that? Why was that a pain point? Um, and why, when you started implementing that into your clients, did that make a difference? Yeah, the anti-proposal sales system. So after working with agency owners for the past three or four years, four, almost four years now, um, it's a it's a common pain point that comes up is uh, if I could just, you know, quit spending so much time on proposals and they, they spend tons of time. They, they essentially write the strategy out and then don't get paid for it. You know, a lot of these agency owners are going to write out the entire strategy and they're going to, you know, I think um, one of my, one of my clients spent something like 15 or 20 hours writing these proposals. And I'm like, what are you doing? You know, you're not getting paid for it and you don't even necessarily know that they're going to close. So showing them a way, you know, that, that, that I learned of how to close somebody 
without having to do this huge detailed proposal. Yes, you have to do a scope of work, you know, when they say yes, and you have to have terms and conditions and so that there's expectations on the back end, but you don't have to get to that point until they say, yes, I want to work with you, right? You don't have to do all that up front. It's, and so having this anti-proposal sales system is a way for them to move through it consistently uh, without putting in tons of work, maybe maybe an hour or less tops. What I know that um, you do two different things. It's ready to scale, ready to sale. What are some core things of the ready to say ready to scale system that people will want to be a part of? What are those four, maybe three or four different core? Yeah, pieces? the three um, main parts of that are, are essentially your time uh, as the owner your offer or your business model and the systems that run it, right? And so the time unlocks everything else. When you free up your time and we free up somewhere between uh, about 50% of an owner's time on average from their week, then that unlocks everything else and allows things to start moving forward and getting them to work on their business more often. When we work on their business model or their offer, you know, most of them don't have any type of real offer. You know, they just say, we have a set of services, you know, we can do SEO, we can do this, we can do that, right? And they can mix it up any way they want, whatever the client wants. Um, we flip that around and, and say, okay, what, who are you actually targeting? And what are you actually doing that's successful? And let's turn that into a pr proprietary process and build an offer around that thing. That then helps them to be more scalable and keeps them from getting bogged down on the back end and delivery. And then the systems help them become more efficient, more profitable. And one of the reasons why, you know, people are always complaining about time and they, they worry they, they, they want to delegate, but they can't is because they don't have the simplified model and they don't have any systems. Therefore, it makes hiring and delegating really, really tough. So when we implement these systems for delivery and, and um, mostly around client work, now they can say, oh, I can see exactly how I can hire somebody and make this really easy for me to keep, to improve the capacity of, you know, my client capacity and keep growing and growing and growing. So those three things are really the core elements of ready to scale. What are um, the ready to sale um, phases as well? Um, maybe three or four different phases of getting ready to sell. Yeah, getting ready to sell. Um, and we kind of touch on this a little bit in the ready scale, but now we're looking at valuation, right? What are the elements that can improve your valuation or your multiple that you're going to get from a buyer? What are these things? Um, and so we we kind of break those in into two areas for, for scaling, we call them the manager metrics, and for some selling, we call them the owner metrics. Okay. So the manager metrics are going to be your basics, right? Your profits and your revenue for the most part, um, your leads and a few other things. Evaluation is going to be other things like, um, do you have recurring contracts? Do you have long-term contracts? Um, how much time are you, or does the business rely on you as the owner um, and so there's eight different um, values or eight different drivers of value that we look at. Uh, we do a very clear assessment and then show you exactly if we bumped each of these by, say, 10 points, um, what that's going to do to your valuation. And so you can easily go from a, if you're, you know, in like a $800,000 EBITDA or somewhere in that range, you know, you can easily go from a two, two and a half X to a three and a half, four X without a, a lot of effort and within, you know, six to 12 months. So really looking at those areas, um, which we can certainly go in depth with, but takes a little more effort to, to talk about. Um, but these, these things are the owner's metric and, and they really drive more value to your business. And, and the reason being is because those are the areas of risk that uh, a buyer is looking at to try to discount your valuation, right? So they don't want to they don't want to be to have something that's risky. And if they are buying something more risky, they want to pay less money for it. But if it's all buttoned up and ready to go, um, and they can see how they can turn their uh, investment around very quickly, then they're willing to pay more for it because it's it's going to turn around faster and it's going to have more potential. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. Um, how long have you worked in? Uh... When did you buy your or start your first agency? Oh, that would have been 12 years ago, roughly. Um, I had it for seven years. 
And then, yeah, in that seventh year, we were, we had done the same thing that, that I had worked people through on the ready to scale, which is I had freed up my time and I'd simplified my business and we started to scale and add more services at that point after we had, you know, reduced them down in order to find that, that consistency in our business. Um, and at that point when I was on a prospect call with somebody in person, which we don't hardly ever do anymore, at least I don't, um, and a couple of meetings later, they asked if uh, I'd be interested in, in getting acquired and going to do an earn out with them and head up their department for marketing and web. Uh, and so I did. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, I did them for some of the wrong reasons. But, uh, you know, those are lessons that um, that I like helping others with so that so that we increase that value and, and fix all those areas so that they don't run into issues on the back end if they do an earn out or, or some other deal. Now, I know you focus on, uh, with Focus First, you focus on time um, in the actual agency. What are a couple things that you do that manage the time or change the time for them so they can get that freedom on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a business side, not just the personal side, but on an actual structure side? Yeah, we will, to in order to free up um, business owners' time, we essentially run them through our system, um, our time freedom focus system. And first starts with measuring their time. You got to know where your time's going. You know, if you, if you don't know where your time's going and you you can't measure it, then you can't fix it. You know, can't prove it. And so we look at where the time's going and then we understand where should their time be going. And then we look at what is your time actually costing your business? Meaning, what are you paying yourself? What's your what's your business paying you? So what is your cost as the owner? And then when you're spending time doing things like client work, even though it's very important to keep the business going, you're actually costing yourself money because that a lot of that client work are things that you could pay somebody half or less per hour to do while you go off and focus on sales that could produ- be producing, you know, two, three, five thousand dollars per month if you close one or two clients. And so you're really costing yourself. That's an opportunity cost that you're costing your business. Um, and, and you're potentially missing out on thousands and th- tens of thousands of dollars every single month, just because you're working on some $10 an hour task that's taking up most of your time. Well, that's incredible, man. Um, this, this has been super cool. Uh, you have a great story, Jeff. Um, we've actually done this before, we'll probably end up doing them again. Um, if you were to talk with people about uh, focus first, I want to give you an opportunity to share with them a little bit about kind of the ready to sale model, and then maybe you can break it down and say, you know, this is the focused first ready to sale model, and then maybe you can give me a breakdown and then say, you know, this is the focus first ready to scale. Maybe you can break those two down really quick. Yeah, so what we do from a high level is at Focus First Advisors, what we do at a high level is we help businesses to increase their value of their business so that they can sell for more money uh, in less time. And 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 the the mindset shift is that your business is an asset. And, and when you think of it as an asset, you stop thinking of it as um, I have to do all the work, right? When you think of your business as... Um, what do I have to do to turn this into an asset and grow an asset? Your priorities shift from getting client work done to working on the business. So that's the first thing we do. And then we, if you're making under a million dollars um, in revenue, then we typically look at your ready to scale program first, which is a 90 day program. And it's one-to-one consulting with me um, and my team. And we will very specifically look at the areas of your business that need to be fixed in order to be more scalable. Uh, More often than not, those fit into those three areas where I talked about time, your offer and model, um, and your systems. And when we fix those things, generally everything else takes care of itself. When you've gotten through that program, now we're looking at how do we create a more sellable or saleable business? Because that gives you the option to do things, right? You can sell it. You can look at maybe merging up and working under a larger company that can give you bigger opportunities. Um, You can look at just, you know, continuing to take that money from the business and doing only the things that you want to do. Um, And and this um, part of this 
group, other group that I'm in right now, it's kind of a mastermind group. They just shared a survey and they said, definitively business owners, um, when they are asked, what is the thing that you want from your business? They want to be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Right. They want that freedom more than they want $10 million. That was the exact survey. And so that's what we're trying to do with ready to sell. We're giving you that option. And then if you do want to sell, we are your um, M&A advisor. We have a, um, a very seasoned M&A advisor on board with us who will work you through that process and make sure you get the most money for your business, um, either all in cash or through some combination of that. Uh, and that's what's exciting to me when we see those deals and we're able to, to help those owners then go on to either do the next thing that they want to do in their life or to just take some time off and and really enjoy life, you know, especially when your kids are, are young. That's that's the hard part. You know, my kids are, are, are pretty much grown now. And so I don't have any more of that left, um, but it's fun. It is a different stage as well. Well, Jeff, you're an awesome guy. How can people reach you? Um, if you think about working with Jeff, uh, I'll tell you, man, he's a great guy. There's an abundance for everything. And, um, you, you hopefully you've always felt that I was your biggest fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, we get along well. Yeah, we do. So, um, where can they find you, man? This is their opportunity to get to know you. Where, where can they find you? The easiest place is the website focusfirst.co. Um, it gives a brief explanation and a short video about what we do. Uh, gives you the opportunity to sign up to jump on a call with me. It's always a no obligation call. Um, I'm just want to learn a little bit more about your business and uh, you can learn a little bit more about our process and see if it's a good fit for you. Um, and we show you exactly how we're going to move your business forward. Exactly what are the needle movers that we are going to affect that are going to be they're going to grow your business. And we show you that tangibly um, through some calculators that we have. So if you want to jump on a call with us and go through one of those for free, um, I don't have any problem doing that. Um, no obligation whatsoever. Other than that, LinkedIn um, and Facebook and Instagram. This has been an amazing episode, Jeff. This is Jeff Skadra. Let's make sure you guys get that right. G-E-O-F-F-S-K-A-R-D-A. Nope. You're the man, dude. All right, man. Congratulations on your growth. And um, this is another episode of the Moved Entrepreneur Evolved podcast. If you have watched this, make sure you like and subscribe. Also, remember that there's some amazing guests that you can take a look at as well. I think this is over 90 episodes. So make sure you go back. There's some amazing episodes. You can even find Jeff's original episode that we did a year, a year or so back. So Jeff, thanks a lot for coming on here. You brought a lot of value and I'm glad to be your friend. Thank you, man. Great being on. If you like this episode, make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just like Nike is to athletes, Moved is to entrepreneurs.